The Paddy Power Half Hour on OTB Sports. Minimal contact in stadiums. That shouldn't stop the usual suspects from going down. Gamble responsibly. Gamblingcare.ie now you're welcome along to the Paddy Power Half Hour. This is the OTB PP special as we look ahead to Ireland versus Serbia in the World Cup qualifiers tomorrow night. Nathan Murphy made his debut on the show on Friday and even after that humiliation in the crappy quiz, he has joined me online. Nathan, how are you getting on? Well, I think I pretty much nailed it last Friday. I was uh, watching the matches over the weekend saying, yeah, tip after tip, just rolling in until Arsenal came back against West Ham and broke my heart. Yeah, it was looking as if Arsenal were actually going to be Going 3-3 with another West Ham OG, but uh, un unlikely. So, Paddy Power himself is also on the show. Paddy, how are you getting on? I'm doing great, and How are you getting on? Yeah, not bad. But Stephen Kenny now, I don't know if he passed out a burial ground on his way home or if it was a funeral he passed out, but the squad just keeps getting worse and worse. His luck when it comes to these games has been absolutely rotten. Ruled out for this game... Kelleher, Randolph, John Egan, Kevin Long, James McCarthy, Cal Modauda, Connor Hyrahan, and Adam Ida. Aaron Conley travels, as does James McLean, but they're undercooked, as Stephen Kenny said himself today. Nathan, going into these games, I know there's going to be Kenny haters out there already ready to pounce and say that we're making excuses, but this is really getting beyond excuses at this point. Ah, it's a results business, baby. He's got to turn up no matter who's there, but he hasn't been helped once again uh, by the sheer amount of injuries as much as anything else. And also the fact that there's very few players putting their hands up over the last four or five months. It's not quite at the level it was, I think, in autumn. You look at the caliber of players that are there and he can still put out a decent team against Serbia tomorrow night, but he just can't seem to get any sort of momentum they have little or no time on the training pitch. They get a couple of half sessions in before they play the match. So if you're trying to transform Irish football, and that's what it has been built up to, maybe uh, overly so, it's hard to do that in the space of 48 hours with half the squad that you expected to be there. But I do think, looking at that potential 11 that he will put out, there's still enough there to go and get a result mm -hmm. tomorrow night. Paddy, when it comes to these international breaks and the starting 11, how important is that when you're pricing up these games? Because... You know, international football these days seems to be quite low scoring and not knowing the team, especially with Ireland's squad luck in terms of COVID times, how difficult or what goes into that thought process? Well, when you're talking about um, Ireland games, they tend to be very low scoring, to be fair, especially in recent times. But uh, yeah, I mean, look, the, it is it is important, but right now it's I guess it's even more tricky than usual as it is for fans as well as bookies trying to price it up but like you heard stories during the week of Serbia and a few players going to be missing COVID or failing COVID tests and stuff like that so they were going to be down a couple of players you think you know that's positive and then we get the squad news now so it's yeah it's a bit all over the shop to be honest but uh, but I guess that's just how it is you just got to get on it and react as and when the, the odds the, the odds may have changed on the back of the thing I mean Ireland are still outsiders are five to one to win the game away Serbia are, are four to seven I can't see them shortening much tighter than that. But um, but yeah, look, it remains to be seen. They're probably not world beaters themselves, but we certainly aren't either. Mm -hmm. Let's go get into the starting 11 then, Nathan, because I know Gary Breen and Vinnie Perth touched on this as well. We'll start from the back. Mark Travers is going to start in goal. Stephen Kenny confirmed that today. He's making a big step up in terms of his international career. He has played a couple of senior appearances for Bournemouth and you know when he's out in loan as well. But I suppose the main person I want to focus on is Dar O'Shea because he has made a breakthrough with West Brom last year and again into the Premier League this year. Shane Duffy is not even playing for Celtic at this point. And when he was playing, he wasn't playing well at all. It surely is a no-brainer for me in terms of bring, bringing Dar O'Shea straight into the starting lineup instead of Shane Duffy. But again, that little bit of Irishness, I think, in terms of picking players on reputation ahead of form, just seems to be in the back of my mind here. Is Dar O'Shea good enough for international level in terms of World Cup qualifiers, trusting him in one of the biggest games Ireland have played in years, or would you go with Shane Duffy? I don't think there's any question that Dar O'Shea is ready for a game of this calibre. He's playing in the Premier League every single week. He's put in decent performances against Manchester City against Arsenal, backs to the wall, performances against Liverpool, and he stood up. You're right about experience, and is it an Irish thing, or is it just international football, where, again, because the managers don't get much time with the players, you go with the tried and trusted. Ironically, Stephen Kenny probably knows more about Darrow Shea than he does 
about Shane Duffy because O'Shea was such an important player for him at the 21s. He played at centre-back in pretty much every game alongside Conor Masterson. And also he played a lot of games in the autumn all over the place. Played left-back, centre-back, right-back, played really well in the last game. Right-back was bombing forward. So I don't think Kenny will have any doubts. And everything we've seen and heard from Darrell O'Shea suggests he has the personality to be ready for a game like this. The concern for Kenny defensively is that when we were talking about a, a new era and maybe a more progressive style of football, it was all based on an assumption that defensively Ireland would remain rock solid as they've been, with a couple of notable exceptions, under Mick McCarthy and by and large under under Martin O'Neill as well. And Stephen Kenny spoke about that. He felt that his first choice back four was probably among the top 10 back fours in all of European football at an international level. But Ireland have looked ragged at times at the back and obviously don't look like scoring at the other end. So the first thing they need to do tomorrow is get back to a away performance at the back, not take any risks, not take any mistakes. And I think Seamus Coleman being back may influence Kenny's decision when it comes to Duffy, because the reason for putting Duffy in would be international experience, mm. particularly with Randolph not being there with the likes of Howard and the missing in midfield. But you've got Seamus Coleman, you've got Kira Clark, who might have only 34 caps, but he's been there for a decade at this stage and you've got Enda Stevens. you've got experience everywhere else that there's no reason they can't bring Darrell O'Shea through that game so it's a big call to leave out Shane Duffy I feel very sorry for Shane Duffy with what he's been through over the last year he obviously had some personal issues with his dad passing away and his dad was his biggest fan went to every single game and he makes his dream move to Celtic that doesn't work out and all of this is on his shoulders as he's losing his place for his club and may lose it for his country and remember, Shane Duffy has been the man for Ireland for four or five years. Mm -hmm. So I don't think we should write that off instantly because of a few bad months at Celtic. But at the same time, I still think Stephen Kenny probably will go with the players who have a little bit of form in Darrow Shea, who's in the relegation zone, and Kira Clark, who's just outside the relegation zone. Yeah, look, the Shane Duffy one's an interesting one because Ireland's a completely different prospect to what Celtic is. Because, for example, like... I've broken down a lot of Shane Duffy this year and I'm, uh, his performances under a microscope weren't great, but there's underlying issues with the Celtic squad as well. The likes of Jeremy Frimpong, who was playing at right back bes beside Shane Duffy, he was nowhere to be seen. He was essentially just playing as a winger, the same as Liverpool. And then you're, you've got covering players like Scott Brown trying to make up the ground. So Shane Duffy was almost trying to do the job of three players at times. Granted, he didn't do them well, but at the same time, you do have to take that into account. Ireland's defence has looked a bit ragged under uh, Stephen Kenny so far, but at the same time, looking back at his results, oh, we're not scoring many goals, but we're not actually conceding that many either. The games that we've lost, we've lost 1-0. We're drawing a lot, a lot of games 0-0. The England game is the exception with a 3-0 defeat. In terms of Mark Travers, Paddy, how much does that influence the price for Serbia to score? Because they've got a lot of firepower up front and Mark Travers is coming in for one of the biggest games of his career here. Yeah, well, funny uh, <laughs> to give you a context. So it's it's 130, so three and a third to one, 130 for Ireland to keep a clean sheet. So that means it's about fives on for Serbia to score. But, but bear in mind, if you want some straws to clutch at, the last time the goalkeeping baton was passed from Shea Given to Darren Randolph, that was in 2015, and that was in the game against Germany. And not only did Randolph keep a clean sheet, but he also had an assist with Shane for that Shane Long goal, didn't he? So, um, so it might. I'm not saying that's going to be the answer to our prayers, but let, let's not give up hope too much. Sometimes in crisis situations like this, you can you can grow a leg. Yeah, and I mean, if you're looking at positions for Ireland, the strength and depths. A couple of a couple of years ago, you would have said we're absolutely set for the next ten years with Mark Travers and with uh, a couple of other pl players coming through. But it, they're like Kieran O'Hara. Their careers just haven't petered out the same way that you you would have expected them to. To a couple of years ago it's sort of similar with another couple of the younger players that are coming through in terms of the midfield again you have this underlying theme of experience versus form for me Josh Cullen who's playing for Anderlecht 19 times he's played in a, in a top league in Europe he surely needs to start this game and I think Howrahan being injured makes it a little bit easier for, Shane, for Stephen Kennedy to make that decision is it going to be a mid, midfield three Nathan what are you thinking? I think it'll be a midfield three that might end up reverting to a midfield five uh, when we don't have the ball, which would be standard practice for big away games in Europe. Much like the attacking three, he has a lot of options. It's, they're all of a similar caliber. The frustration is that nobody has put their hand up over the last four or five months to Stephen Kenny saying, you've got to pick me. 
uh, with the exception of Connor Howard, who's out injured. Like, there's nobody when he picks his team today or tomorrow morning and announces it that can be knocking down the manager's door saying, I'm not happy about this because uh, unfortunately they haven't had enough chances at club level to prove themselves. He may well go for Cullen. Cullen is the beneficiary, I think, of being out of sight. So while, yes, we may watch parts of Belgian games and at the weekend watch him for 10 minutes before he gets sent off, uh, I don't want to say a myth because it'd be very harsh of Josh Cullen to say it's a myth because he's done well when he's played for Ireland. Uh, but it almost feels like there's a, an exoticness to uh, Josh Cullen now because he's playing with Anderlecht, whereas you know, players playing in the championship are arguably playing at not far off the standard that Josh Cullen is I playing I wouldn't at. say that, in fairness. like You're, you're talking about a, a team that plays in European football. I know they're not doing that well this year, but I mean, I think we look down on these teams well, too play, much. Play, play, Anderlecht play are a European Burke. team. They do not play championship-style football. They do not play champions level, championship-level football. Do they not? The Belgian league isn't one well, of Europe's well, top Burnley, leagues. Burnley, for example, Burnley, for example, Bur- finished in you, the, in the Europa League. Player, would I prefer a player to play for Burnley or to play for Anderlecht? Which is a higher standard? Without question, Burnley. But this Every is the question, though, no, Nathan, because Burnley got to the Europa League and they got their arses tanked. So are they better than teams that are playing in Europe? I would say they're of a similar standard, if not better. And they're playing against better players every single week. So if you're Robbie Brady, you're playing against a far higher standard of player every week than Josh Cullen is at Anderlecht. Yes, mm. it, it, it may suit if Ireland are a team who want to get on the ball playing for one of the best teams in a foreign league because actually that's what he is getting to go and do there. Whereas... You know, at Burnley, it's obviously a more industrial style that Sean Dyche likes to uh, to go with. And I would definitely encourage Irish players to go and spread their wings and go around Europe. But I don't think just because he's playing at Anderlecht, he's necessarily playing at a massively higher standard than some of the other midfielders in that squad. Because he's playing at Anderlecht, is he a better option than a Jason Malumbi? or Jason Knight, I'm not convinced because I'm sure they could also go on Anderlecht if if the opportunity came up. So I I, I, may, you know, I wouldn't have an issue with Cullen starting in midfield at all. I think when he's come on for Ireland, he's done well. Kenny obviously likes that player at the base who'll just keep things ticking over. Mm-hmm. But I don't think, much like the other five or six contenders, any of them have done enough really to say, I've got to start. With the exception maybe of Jason Knight, but he doesn't have any experience at international level. And it's probably Knight or Malumbi for that midfield. So who's making up the three then? I I think Cullen, Hendrick, and either Knight or Malumbi. I still think he'll play Jeff Hendrick. I think Jeff Hendrick's done very well for Stephen Kenny so far. He's never going to be the player people want him to be, but he's mm-hmm. still as good as we've got. And I think he brings good energy level. He has connected the midfield and the attack very well in matches so far. So... I wouldn't have a problem starting Hendrick. And also, he brings a little bit of experience in there. Uh, maybe Knight has gone ahead of Malumbi because Malumbi hasn't been playing for Preston. But it's <laughs> it's not a midfield that is really uh, going to strike fear into the hearts of the Serbians. Yeah, let's, let's talk about Serbia because a lot of the talk around them has been based upon their Euro form and their failure to qualify for that. But if you look at their squad objectively, and especially with a new manager coming in, Luka Jovic playing for Eintracht Frankfurt, three goals in 11 appearances. Dusan Vlahic has 12 goals in Serie A this year. Uh, Milovinkovic Savic, six goals in Serie A. Dusan Tadic, 13 goals, 12 assists for Ajax this year. Uh, Grucic playing in midfield, obviously previously at Liverpool, six times he's played in the Champions League this year. And then Philippe Kostic again playing up front for Eintracht Frankfurt, four goals this year. That's a hell of a lot better than our squad at the minute in terms of form. Yeah, uh, you look at the Serbian squad, there's any amount of talent there. They haven't shown it, though. Remember, they were beaten by Scotland in a playoff just months ago. Uh, they have a new manager in place, a, a legend in Dragon Sojkovic, so maybe he can make a direct impact. He's certainly talking a good game and talking up, playing a free-flowing, attacking style of football against Ireland's British style, counter-attacking football. But they have to go and deliver because they are the great underachievers of European football. They've had ridiculous success at underage level, winning underage World Cups, but we haven't seen that transfer transfer to the senior squad at all yet. Uh, they didn't qualify for the Euros. They've never qualified for the Euros. The few times they get to the World Cup, they've never delivered there. So on paper, yes, this is a Serbian side that are far better than this Irish squad, but they haven't shown it when it's actually mattered on the pitch. So I think that's what gives Ireland some hope. And 
in terms of the longer term group and trying to progress and finish inside the top two and get a playoff, at least we all expect that Portugal, with the quality they have, will win this group. Because it's eight games, if Ireland could go and take something tomorrow night, Serbia, Portugal straight after that, then they've got Azerbaijan. There's not a huge amount of time for Serbia to get back if it's a slow start, mm -hmm. which may well work in Ireland's favour. Likewise, flip that, if Ireland were to lose tomorrow night, it's a very long way back because you're looking at those Serbian and Portuguese games probably knowing you're going to have to win one of them. Yeah, this is the Paddy Power special here on Off the Ball. We're looking ahead to Ireland's clash with Serbia tomorrow night uh, in Belgrade. With Paddy Power's Aka Cracker, you can ensure your Aka, if one leg off your four legs or more Aka lets you down, you can get your stake back as a free bet. It's available on all football matches and markets. For information on responsible gambling, visit gamblingcare.ie. Paddy, obviously goals is the main thing that we're going to be talking about here when it comes to Ireland because they are, they are not scoring many What's the market saying in terms of this game? Because surely the safe money is putting it on low scoring, but also you're not probably getting your money's worth in terms of what you're getting back. Well, fu funny you say. I was just, I just on on Nathan's point there about about trying to get a result. I was um I was talking to Mick McCarthy last week as I massively drop a name, but uh, I was asking him about saying if you were managing the thing, would you prefer to be playing Luxembourg first rather than Serbia first to try and get a win under your belt? I was saying obviously you would. He, he, and he was there, no, no, no. As only I can't do his accent, but uh, and he was saying that um, actually when if, if some of his uh, successful qualifying campaigns, they always started off with a difficult away game, and you just managed to get yourself a draw, just get yourself a point, and it's massive. So you know it's an opportunity there, I think, to try and catch the catch Serbia cold as well, and just try and get out there and keep it, and obviously keep it tight and all that. But anyway, uh, you asked me about scoring goals, and um, <laughs> hopefully we'll be talking about some Ireland goals. Uh, but it's seven games since we scored a goal, isn't it? So it's eleven to ten that we score a goal uh, in this match against Serbia, which I can't say I'll be uh, you know, that excited about those odds, mm -hmm. to be honest with you, based on our recent record. Uh, probably will be low scoring, like you know, dragging us back to the glory days of low scoring Italy 19. I'm old enough for that, but uh, um, I think it's unlikely we'd be scoring for fun, but 11 to 10 that we'd score a goal against Serbia. Can't say I'll be biting your hand off for that one, to be honest. Yeah, one thing that generally comes up on the Paddy Power Half Hour on a Friday is that maybe the no sco goal scorer is a better bet in this. Are you, do you think that Serbia will score, or is that something that people could look at? Well, Serbia are very likely to score, but like, yeah, the no goal score is a good shout. It's uh, it's going to be around a, a five to one shot. I'll say I'm going to check for you when I'm chatting to you. Um, it is. Six to one, they're even better. So about six to one for no goal score. That could be a chance. That's a good result for us. If we get, you get away with a nil draw, you'd be you'd bite your hand off, wouldn't well, you? Yeah, as, as as Mick McCarthy, your pal, would say, he would have bit, bitten your hand off for a nil nil result against Serbia in the opening day of World Cup qualifiers. Nathan, the front three, it's impossible to choose, but also at the same time, I'm not sure it makes all that much of a difference who goes in there because nobody is really scoring, nobody's really on form, and we just need to sort of pick up a spark somewhere but it's hard to know where that's going to come from again it's not as though Aaron Connolly and Callum Robinson or Shane Long or James Collins are coming into this and Stephen Kenny saying I have to start you because you're in a blistering run of form Callum Robinson hasn't played a game for West Brom in a couple of months at this stage Shane Long has dropped out of the Bournemouth side over the last few weeks James Collins has dropped out of the Luton team and Aaron Connolly is carrying an injury and hasn't exactly set the world alight in the Premier League. I think he's a real threat, but in terms of goal scoring, unfortunately, it hasn't really happened for him this season. So you are looking for things to fall into place. Like What gives hope is the performance against Slovakia, where Ireland like, should have scored, should have scored several goals, created as many opportunities as Ireland have created in a big game for many a year. So if they can get near that level of performance, they won't be far off tomorrow night he's got to have options again for that front three uh, you could potentially play Alan Brown further forward will he play Matt Doherty on the right where he might be down as a bit in the front three but he'd probably be slightly deeper but Doherty has looked good in an attacking sense over the last few weeks we all know about his weaknesses defensively but if Seamus Coleman is behind him I don't think you need to worry too much about that so I wouldn't be surprised away from home if Doherty got the nod on the right hand side Connolly if he's fit will play and then it's whether does he play on the left hand side or do you play maybe Callum Robinson on the left cutting in? I thought Robinson was exceptional that night in Slovakia. Hasn't been able to play yet because of all the COVID issues, but showed enough, I think, to Stephen Kenny that he should be in the team. If he doesn't, then he goes with Connolly on the left hand side. Well, then you're into James Collins, who played last time out uh, in the game against Bulgaria and didn't make much of an impact mm -hmm. at all. Or going back to Shane Long once again and hoping that he can have 
one of those Germany style nights and nick a goal. And remember the last World Cup qualifying campaign, Ireland did pull off big results mm-hmm. away from home. Uh, Austria, Wales, even the draw over in Serbia last time out. But they need to find a goal. They just need it to go in off somebody's arse at this stage. It doesn't matter how it goes in. They just need a goal, I think, to relieve all the tension that's around the squad. Mm-hmm. Well, that, well, that's the other narrative going into this is style versus results. And obviously, Stephen Kenny is always going to be based on, he's going to be judged on the results, but also because he's put such an emphasis on changing the style of Ireland, how do you manage that in terms of these big games that you need to get results? And a part of me thinks that maybe Shane Long is the right man to have in there because... Mark Travers, I remember when he was playing for Bournemouth and as well for the underage Ireland sides, he does have a good passing range. And whether or not you, you want to abandon your, your style of football, your brand of football, you don't have to abandon it, abandon it completely to allow yourself that opportunity to maybe get the ball, hoof it long over the top of the defence for Shane Long to run on to the yard time and just have that option there if you need to. And looking at the starting eleven or looking at the squad, there's no player other than Shane Long and Nat that provides you that type of player or that type of talent. I think Aaron Connolly can play that role as well. I think he has that pace to exploit teams in behind. Uh, listen, if uh, you're Dragon Stojkovic and you've said that Ireland are a British side and what you're talking about sounds like going back to 1990 and having Packy Bonner send it as long as possible up to Niall Quinn, I, I don't think that will happen. And I it's not one thing or the other. Lots of teams play long balls. Like Liverpool play a huge amount of long mm-hmm. Man balls. Man City play they, route one exactly, times. But they do it because they want to win the second ball. So yeah. they know the other centre half is probably going to win the header. But the mentality monsters, as Liverpool used to describe themselves back when they were half decent, you're swarming around the midfield then to win it back in a dangerous position. And Ireland did that really well in the few decent performances they've had under Stephen Kenny, most of their chances have come on that sort of turnover ball in midfield where they're attacking quickly. There's a good intensity to it. Shane Long has been in and around the squad under Stephen Kenny. He wasn't selected at one stage, then he was injured. So does Kenny... I think if he's looking for that pace in behind option, Aaron Connolly gives him that and gives him probably a whole lot more as well. Mm -hmm. And maybe Long is the man off the bench. This is sort of a question that I'm going to throw in randomly, Paddy, but who is Ireland's best player at the minute? Um, Jesus. <laughs> it's actually not easy to answer that. I mean, you're probably somebody like Seamus Coleman, I guess, but I mean, it's 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 hard. It's hard. It's a hard question to answer. It doesn't jump off the page, actually. And it's not like mm. a, you've got a, a long list to choose from either. So that's maybe a worry, but maybe this is a... We are kind of in a... Are we in a rebuilding period or some sort of a time of change with the Irish team still? Because with Stephen, the Stephen Kenny era hasn't really kicked off yet, so maybe we're we're yet to establish our new uh, new legends, I guess, or whatever. And well, if, that, if there's, there's no superstar. Is become, there? get, you what? There's no superstar in the squad at the moment, but I I I'd be wary of the way they're spoken about at times, as if they've somehow picked their name out of a hat to play for Ireland. That this is the worst group of Irish players there's ever been. Like that isn't the case. Just look through that potential 11 tomorrow night where they're playing their club football at an incredibly difficult time to make progress in the game. Maybe our best player at the moment is Seamus Coleman, but Seamus Coleman is right back, generally first choice when he's fit for a team that's pushing for the Champions League this season. The alternative is Matt Doherty, who Spurs just spent a lot of money on. Darrell Shea is one of the youngest centre-halves playing week in, week out in the Premier League. Kieran Clark, vastly experienced centre-half. Emma Stevens last season, one of the best left-backs in the Premier League. There's a lot of quality in that squad. They just need to gel and while there's a fear of what Serbia have on paper they face the exact same difficulty as us which is they have a new manager who got that squad together yesterday today who's had no time on the training pitch you can talk all his wants mm-hmm. about attacking football could have little or no time to get that across to the players so I I think we need to give this group a little bit of a break at times and show them a bit of respect for what they are doing and what they're achieving by getting to this level yes there's not the superstars of before, but give them a bit of time and put a bit of faith in them. And I think eventually this group will give Ireland plenty of decent days. Yeah, I was actually going to, I was preparing myself to have the argument with you there because I did not think you were going to say Seamus Coleman. But Seamus Coleman's the man. Donegal man, of course he's the best player in the squad. But in terms of that, yeah, like this this squad are, are going to go through difficult periods, but over the, the long period of time, hopefully that Stephen Kenny is in charge, the under 15s, under 16s, under 17s, right up to the 23s in the senior squad, all have this progression plan that are all playing the same football. So it may not be a World Cup 
uh, this this one coming in Qatar, the Ireland Sea Progress, but it may be the one after that that we actually see a lot of what the the sort of foundations that are being laid now. That's when we'll hopefully see the results of of this period in time. In terms of this game coming up tomorrow night, what's your predictions, then, Paddy? Um, I'm going to be optimistic and go for a nil-nil draw. Maybe, well, guys, let's go for a one-all draw. So we'll, we'll actually score a goal as well, so it'll all be positive. I do, I do think we could get something out of it. Uh, maybe it's blind faith, but I just think early in the competition, nobody's really up up to proper up on a sprinting pace, if you like. Like all the squads are just together and everything. So, sure, why not? We we we'll grab a point out of the first away match. We'll hammer Luxembourg 105 nil, and then we'll be away in a hack. Good stuff, Nathan. Are you as confident as Paddy? Yeah, I went for a one-one on OTBAM this morning. I'm surprised, uh, considering Ireland's history away from home, that uh, a one-all draw is an odds-on at this stage with the bookmakers. It seems to be the safest possible tip and I think this time around it would be a very good result one all away from home 100% we would grab it with both hands right now I was quietly confident last night that Ireland could get something and then I looked at Serbia's squad and I know that they've had a lot of issues but I just can't get past the fact that our front th- three going up against the front three that they have who are scoring regularly in, in the top leagues in Europe I just I, I, I'm not 100% confident going into this so I think we could be actually coming out of this a little bit disappointed. I know that makes me unpatriotic, but that's just what my mind is saying right now. That's us done on the Paddy Power Half Hour. You can watch the Paddy Power Half Hour every Friday at 1.30. It's usually myself, Jer, and uh, an, an odds compiler from Paddy Power giving us the real insight into the markets. Joe Malloy is up next. He's speaking with Liverpool and Fulham legend Danny Murphy.